Hi, this is John Harcher, and welcome to the Keep On Grooving Video Holiday Special 2023 Edition. And this year, there will be an addition to our edition. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may present for its debut, the Keep On Grooving Yule Log. You won't hear any Jimmy music, you'll just hear the my dulcet tones underneath it, but it's got to be something different, so... Enjoy. One of the bits of stretching regarding Jimmy and Christmas for me involves Curtis Knight and the Squires. As I've mentioned a number of times on December 26, 1965, the band played George's Club 20 in Hackensack, New Jersey. As someone born in Passaic and being a former resident of Wallington in East Rutherford, It was always hard for me to imagine Jimmy was right in my backyard, albeit a few years before I was born, but it happened. The band played a mix of blues, R&B, and some rock and roll covers. Jimmy also took a few turns on uh, lead vocal. Curtis even mentioned the band was being recorded that night, so it must have been in the back of Jimmy's mind to really do well. These were among the tapes Ed Chopin had in his possession, thanks to Jimmy's $1 contract that ended up yielding the Band of Gypsies album as a court settlement. After Jimmy's death, these tapes were recycled endlessly. Along with the umpteen re-edits of the studio songs, a large number of recordings from the December 26th show made it out. A box of PPX recordings came out in the late 90s claiming to be complete, but really weren't. Surprise, surprise. Included in there were around 24 live songs, and yes... Even there, they had some re-edits and retitles to make it seem like there were more. I put them together in a playlist that resembled a concert set and would listen to it the week after Christmas in those bygone days when I would actually commute to work. Then when Experience Hendrix got to put out their version with some songs not on the complete version, I'd have even more to listen to. I'm probably going to have to do a whole show just on the Curtis Knight recordings and albums since it's a big part of Jimmy's legacy. So I'll end up talking about this album in depth there. Now, if you could have told Jimmy that night in Hackensack exactly one year from then he'd be in England performing with his own band, I wonder what his reaction would have been. But that's exactly what happened. In fact, backstage the night after Christmas 1966, he came up with an idea for a song and started writing down the lyrics as they came to him. It started out with the first line, Purple Haze, All In My Brain. He originally had it titled as Purple Haze, Jesus Saves, appropriate for Christmas. The band was hitting a lot of smaller venues at that point away from London, and for New Year's Eve, they ended up at Noel Redding's mom's place. It must have been really cold that night because as he walked in, he asked if he could do just one thing. Let me stand next to your fire. A year after that, the experience was one of the top draws on the concert circuit. They had been asked to be part of the Christmas on Earth Continued Festival, playing alongside such bands as Traffic, The Move, The Animals, and Pink Floyd, an appearance that ended up being Sid Barrett's last with the band. The concert was filmed. There are bits and pieces of it floating around out there. Two segments of the experience's performance were first shown in Jimmy Plays Monterey. Jimmy tells the audience to cover their ears before he breaks into a short and noisy version of Sgt. Pepper's. The other clip had Jimmy using the tremolo bar on his guitar to make it sound like a bagpipe before launching into Wild Thing. The video out there on the net these days has Foxy Lady in between those two clips. Overall, it's a really fun performance. Now, a few days earlier, the band recorded its last session for the BBC that ended up airing on Christmas Eve 1967. So now this is the best of segment of our show. You know, that's what happens during the holidays. Here's a recap of that show that I did a couple episodes ago. The final session occurred in mid-December and was broadcast on Christmas Eve 1967. All five songs recorded that night made the CD. The session started with Jimmy doing a fake jingle for BBC Radio 1. It was followed up by a couple of songs from Axis Bold as Love, Spanish Castle Magic, and Wait Until Tomorrow. 
Next up was another cover tune, this one by a little band called The Beatles. Jimmy had done Day Tripper with Curtis Knight way back when, so he knew it well enough. The liner notes hint the song may have had a secret special guest star and background vocals, you know, just imagine. Uh, but no, it's not him. It's just Noel doing a very close Lennon imitation. The session ended with the premiere of a new song Jimmy called Get My Heart Back Together, but later better known as Hear My Train of Coming. One thing in particular I do have to bring up about this session is Noel's enthusiastic participation, joining in on vocals a lot. Redding's frustration with the band are well known, and things started breaking down a few weeks later during the recording of Electric Ladyland. I think it's great to hear him really enjoying himself and adding a lot of fun to the whole session. Since it ends with Jimmy wishing everyone a Merry Christmas, this has kind of become a Christmas tradition with me listening to it, usually on the way home from work on the 23rd, when I used to actually commute home from work. Okay, we're back live again. Right around this time in 1967, there's a fun promo photo for Axis Boulder's Love with Jimmy dressed as Santa. This would come into wider use later when the estate wanted to put out their own Christmas release. What was it? Well, during the baggy sessions, Jimmy, Buddy, and Billy interspersed a few Christmas songs in with the songs they were getting ready for the uh, concerts for December 31st and January 1st. Buddy starts off with a staggered march with Jimmy going into an instrumental Little Drummer Boy. After a few minutes, he moves into the loudest version of Silent Night you're likely to ever hear. They would wind down by playing Old Lang Syne with Buddy pitching in with, well, not quite vocals, but Buddy be doing Buddy. 1974 had already seen the baggy sessions tapped for Burning Desire and Hoochie Coochie Man from Loose Ends. For the holidays that year, radio stations got a promotional single from Reprise called And a Happy New Year. It had Little Drummer Boy and Silent Night on one side and Old Lang Syne on the other. I believe this may have technically been the first release of the Alan Douglas era. In 1979, the single was reissued to stations with all three songs on each side. It would be heard on rock stations during the holidays. I remember one time Darren called me up one time when it was on K-Rock in New York, and they were playing it on Christmas Eve, and he made sure that I, uh, I heard it. So thanks again, Darren. Experience Hendrix finally let the single be released to the public on their own release in 1999 on CD called Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Expanded a little bit, but whatever. The cover was that picture of Jimmy as Santa Claus. It includes the edited version, which is oddly enough shorter than the 1979 version where all three are together, an extended version which switches to mono at the point where the single version ends, and Three Little Bears, which is currently the only place you can get it now until they finally get around to reissuing War Heroes. Then eventually the circle was completed when it was reissued on vinyl a few years back for a Black Friday record day release in time for, you guessed it, Christmas. Oh, and just to complete all the years that, uh, that we're covering in here, the only thing Christmas related in 1968 was a poetry reading Jimmy attended at St. Mark's Church in the village on Christmas Eve. Sounds like a nice night. However, just two days later, on December 26th, three years to the day he played Hackensack, New Jersey, and two years to the day after he started writing Purple Haze, Jimi Hendrix became a film star as Monterey Pop had its grand premiere in American theaters. Well, for those of you watching on video, I hope you enjoyed that. Just a little something different for the holiday presentation this year. I was thinking, should I sit down and try to redo the whole thing, what I did last year? And I was like, I don't really have time for that. So I just figured, let me just put a visual presentation onto the good old Christmas special from... Uh, from the COVID days, as you could hear in my COVID voice. So the good thing is we can use that little addition I just did, kind of like the added ending of Rudolph um, with the Island of Misfit toys. That wasn't in the 1964 version, but it, there were so many people who complained. In 1965, they added in Rudolph and bringing Santa back to pick up the toys there. So that's what the little segment was about Monterey Pop. So we use that as a springboard to figure out what are some good Christmas gifts 
to give the Hendrix fan, maybe starting out and isn't a diehard like me who has up these, <laughs> all these out the wazoo. So to start off, you must have some version of Monterey, because remember, there's two different versions out there. This is the readily accessible one, the one from Experience Hendrix that they put out in 2007. Um, very well done, very nice looking, but I do have to say they did make some editorial changes based on what was on the original version from 1986. It doesn't quite make it the definitive edition. Unfortunately, I, yeah. there's a couple editing choices, camera choices that are like, uh, I, I can't say that this is the definitive one. So, you can get that, and you won't be disappointed, but they'll really love this. This is from Criterion. This is the complete Monterey Pop Festival with all the footage shot by D.A. Pennebaker, and I think edited completely by all of them, because we know this has... I'm going to pull these out. You have the original Monterey Pop. You have Jimmy Plays Monterey and Otis Redding's uh, set called Shake. Plus, you get the outtake performances, which has a lot of stuff from The Who and Janis Joplin, Simon and Garfunkel, all of them. So these are actually surprisingly for a criterion, they're actually pretty cheap. Plus, there's now a Blu-ray edition, and I'll show you on the video right here. And this is what it looks like. Um, I haven't gotten that one yet myself, but I'm planning to upgrade probably maybe next year for the Barnes & Noble 50% off Criterion sale. So, I would get both of them. <laughs> Make it a complete present. Buy both of them, and they'll absolutely love it. The next one you definitely have to get, Jimmy at Woodstock. No question. There, this is the entire set without a lot of Larry Lee's contributions, but the footage looks great. The sound, sound um, sounds amazing. You're not going to go wrong with this, plus this you get the extra version with Here My Trainer coming in the black and white video section. So this is a must get. They'll never complain about it. Um, let me just get one other thing here. Uh, whoop. Oh, there it is. Oh, pardon me. Not good video here. Now, this is the original DVD of the extended edition um, from 1994. There's also a Blu-ray edition that I do have, and I'll show it here. Yep, see, it's got the fringes and everything. It's got the, I call it the, the Johnny Bravo set, the Brady Bunch Johnny Bravo, not the Cartoon Network Johnny Bravo. Oh, mama. Uh, so that's another great addition, but you can't go wrong with the Hendrix Woodstock set. You get a lot of playing, a lot of coolness. Definitely something to look out for. Now, the next one I'd want uh, the uh, Hendrix fan to get as a present you got to pick the right one. It's probably easier these days, but they look the same, don't they? This is the Band of Gypsies videos. Now, wait a minute. They look exactly the same. How do you know the difference? On the back of the original, we just have these. But on the newer one, you have your, oop, let me do this, there we are, your legacy. So this is from Sony. This is the one to get. So if you're ordering on Amazon or eBay, make sure it's the, I think this is 2011 this came out, the 2011 edition from Sony, because that has the remix soundtrack and the additional color footage. So that's definitely the one to get. It's confusing, and it's annoying that they haven't upgraded that on the Blu-ray yet. So, maybe at some point they'll do it. 
Um, but they haven't as of yet. Now, what they did upgrade on Blu-ray, that's another, that's, I would say the final must get, is Jimmy Plays Berkeley. This is the one where they took the original version and then they added in some footage that they finally found after umpteen years of everybody thinking there was no additional footage laying around. So they added it back in. And then plus, they also have the complete second set, which was released as a separate CD. It's on here as like an extra. Uh, I think it's a 5.1 mix as well. So you have the extra added enhancement of that. So that's the ones that I definitely say to get as gifts. Definitely search those out. Your Hendrix fan will not go wrong with any one of those. The, the other one I'd say is kind of on the border, but is, is you know, if they're, good, if they're gonna be a completist, you definitely have to get the Blu-ray version of Blue Wild Angel. This uh, is the Isle of Wight set. And this one contains the additional footage of Hey Joe as an extra, since they only shot it from one camera. But this, again, good sound, good quality. So that's on the border. I wouldn't get that first because it's, you know, it's got its clunky moments. But that's something to have on the list. If you, if you know they have the other ones, then that would be okay. Uh, let me just do a few of the other ones that you can kind of think as extras, just for what's out there. Uh, of course, there's the 1973 Jimi Hendrix film. Again, I don't think this has been released on Blu-ray either. So we're just stuck with this. <laughs> the deluxe edition from, I think this was 2005. Um, it's just, if you're a Hendrix fan, you gotta have to see it. And this has a lot of extras on it, so it makes it a worthwhile watch. And just to see how people thought of him, like very close to after he died and their reactions at that point. And then it's funny thinking back, seeing some of these people talk later about Hendrix and how things may have changed a bit. But uh, I'm not sure if that's still in print either, but you know, you can probably find it relatively cheap. Again, I'm also not sure if this one's in print. This is the Dick Cavett episodes. Uh, so you get the two segments of the, the Dick Cavett show with Jimmy and him doing uh, Hair My Trainer coming on the first show and Isabella slash Machine Gun on the second show. Plus there's a few extras thrown in here as well. Again, something nice to have for completeness' sake. Then, speaking of DVDs, again, something that they haven't done on Blu-ray yet, not that I know of. This is the 1968 Experience film with Jimi Hendrix, the one where they originally had him sitting on the stool playing acoustic guitar um, with the big hip black hat on that they made more famous in the Jimi Hendrix film in 1973. Um, this is, again, it's an interesting keepsake from that era not vital, but there are a bunch of extras on there. I think there's a couple songs from Stockholm, which probably needs a complete release at some point. Uh, even though it's weird, the, per the performance itself is, uh, you know, but it's, it's, it's on video, it's like, you feel like, it's like we really should put it out because we don't have that much video of Jimmy laying around. So, and speaking of video of Jimmy laying around, the American version of Isle of Wight would be the Atlanta Pop Festival. It's a good performance, but there were clunky moments in it. And so, like, like I said when I was doing the original um, review for this one, the video version is called Electric Church. The CD version is called Freedom. It's like, why did you mix up two different names for the same show? You know, Blue Wild Angels, Blue Wild Angel, and CD and, and DVD and Blu-ray. Why, why mix it up? But... That's what they did. And then the last one that you have separately is the Here I Train a Coming documentary. Uh, this was the one from American Masters. Um, I kind of like the one that they included with West Coast Seattle Boy a little better, the Voodoo Child one with Bootsy Collins doing a dead-on Jimmy impersonation. But if, if you want to see, like, what a highfalutin 
Jimi Hendrix documentary would have looked like. That's what it was. So that's your video recap of what's out there. Uh, if you can't find it immediately on Amazon or any of the other stores, you know, look to eBay. I got a couple of those on eBay because they weren't readily available and they didn't, it didn't break the bank. You know, you can get it for 20 bucks or something like that. So that's the end of the holiday special this year. Uh, next year, like I said, we'll be doing, we'll start off in January and then we're into February. We'll start off with the European shows in January and February from 1969, including Royal Albert Hall. I figured let's just get this out of the way since we're not going to get the video and album anytime soon unless they're going to shock me. Um, let's just do it for the 55th anniversary. Let's just get it done, get it over with, and move on from there. Then for the spring, kind of like similar to what, what I did with Eric Clapton last year, I'll do traffic since Steve, Dave, and Chris are very involved in Jimmy's recordings. And it turns out one of his old, one of Jimmy's oldest friends from when he first came to London was Jim Capaldi. So it's just, I always wondered, it's like, did Jim feel left out? It's like, well, he was actually friends with Jimmy first. Uh, and then we'll just have to keep our eyes and ears open for any new release if the Electric Lady Studios box set will finally come. That'll be great. So that's it for this year. I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and look forward to some really good stuff in 2024. Thank you.